Okay, so we've got the new motor, uh, or the second hand motor that I'll be replacing my CBR1000. So I decided against fixing it. Um, the problem was the big end bearings that was seized. And uh, you could fix it, but I had other questions about the engine and it's a lot quicker uh, and easier and around the same price. Uh, although you don't really know what you're getting. The guy tested it before he sent it, like I bought it from an actual, you know, business, like a wrecking yard. Uh, they, and they shipped it up from me from South Australia. So, uh, welcome to my channel where we talk about bikes and Bible verses. As usual, we have a Bible verse at the end, and uh, hopefully you can stick around for that. So there's one really important thing that I want to talk about before I start um, just installing this engine. Uh, it's something that a lot of people can uh, make a mistake on and cause damage uh, to their bolts and really not get anywhere. And uh, most sport bikes, or the, the two that I've worked on, so my ZX6 and this one, you know, it's the same system. You've got a bolt across here, a bolt across here, and then two little little bolts, one on each side. And uh, there's similar patterns on all of them. There's always one adjustable bolt from the inside. So if you can see here, this uh, bolt here is adjustable. And the mistake that a lot of people make is you can see that there's like a Allen key uh, thing here, and then there's a bolt on the other side. And people think, you know, if you have just normal mechanical experience, you might think you, have, you can turn it from either end. But what actually has happened, you can see this is keyed, and uh, the other side is just a bolt. So when the bolt is in, if I've seen people, I've seen a bike where maybe they thought that, you know, undoing it from this side is going to undo the engine. But what this does is because it's keyed, when you're when you're turning it, when you're turning it from here, you're actually adjusting the um, bushing for the. You're actually adjusting this um, this thing here. And so what people do, maybe when they're trying to unassemble the engine, is they're trying to turn on this, but they don't realize that this is pushed up against the engine. Uh, so that's the mistake a lot, of, a lot of people make. So this side, actually, first you need to undo the bolt on the other side, the nut, and then, um, and then you undo this to pull it back from the engine. And on this bike, this, you know, this pushes up hard up against the engine. So, um, on this bike it says this needs to be 10 Newtons, which is not much. Uh, on my ZX6R it doesn't say any Newtons, it says that it, the clearance between uh, this part and the engine should be 0 millimeters. so you just push it up until it's hard up against it, and then that's it, you leave it. Um, and then you undo uh, the, or you, you do or undo the other side. And uh, so yeah, I've seen people who thread the frame who ruined this bolt because they didn't understand this component of it they just thought it was just a bolt over through that goes straight through and you can just undo it from here um, so my ZX6 uh, had this system but it was on the bottom uh, this has a little bit of a, some thing as well which I need to look into how that works uh, it's just actually it's just this you can just push it in um, it's kind of spring loaded and that also adjusts uh, my ZX6 didn't have that. So one thing with sport bikes uh, in the in these main bolts that hold the engine is there's always a castle nut. So probably just order the tool beforehand. But uh, this castle nut uh, doesn't have much to do with the actual bolt. It's more to do with uh, once you've set the bushing in place, uh, you, you you tighten it with the castle nut. I got a new cam, cam chain tensioner because uh, these ones have a lot of problems. Uh, they tend to make a lot of rattling noises. 
and uh, when I bought the engine they told me they started and they were kind of hearing that noise as well so I just thought buy a new one install it instructions are not that clear on how to do it but see how it goes So this hoist is pretty useful. Um, I don't know if I could remove engines without it. I actually, I actually just made this myself. Um, I bought the this mechanism part from the hardware shop, um, and I bought the steel and I took it to uh, my relative's workshop and I welded. I did all the welds and, and everything um, for, for this. So like. Uh, yeah, this this part can come off, um, I, and I just unbolt it, and it becomes compact, and I just put it in my shed. So very useful, like to e even hold the engine. I'm gonna remove it from here, and I'm gonna put it just to s give extra support. So that's what you need when you're actually removing the engine as well. Just that you know the jack and the hoist will give you like a lot of um, you know, confidence, and that it's that it's gonna hold. Okay, so after a lot of screwing around and putting it in the wrong way, I realized that it should be up this way. So this one we point it, so we bring the engi engine tilted like this, the way it is, and we aim for here to come up to here, through this part, so bypassing, so it's got to come sort of a bit forward and then push backwards while this is up. Okay, so after putting this bolt in and removing this water thing on this side uh, I just hoisted the engine up and then I actually got the two bolts in so the two hanger bolts on this side and on the other side uh, I think this is like a big milestone so I'm gonna get rid of all these hoists and jacks and stuff and just remember everything is loosely in okay the, the main bolts like the bottom one everything is loose to begin with um, you do the adjusting more towards the end so I'm probably gonna just start putting all this stuff together first okay and so far so I've put the uh, I put the stator in I put my old one in um, and uh, because the engine didn't come with it this case was empty so I've put my stator in there you gotta seal it um, probably the second most annoying job is cleaning off uh, the old sealant, the old seal, um, and uh, putting the new one and putting it on. After that, um, just doing wiring here, so you know, neutral switch here, which is a bit annoying to actually get on. Uh, I don't think it's on very tight because I can't get the spanner in there. Um, all, all various, you know, starter motor um, cables and. You need the instruction manual and I think googling what's what uh, I had to google what the oil switch was and I found actually this this engine came with one already so um, so the oil switch is down here and so I unplugged the loose one and I, I just plugged the one that was already on the engine so um, I think I've 
nearly done with just the main engine wiring uh, then it's going to be like all the other fuel injection and stuff oh i wanted to change the i want to look at the condition of these rubbers here because i noticed so i don't know if you can see that but uh a bit you can see it's it's cracked and i don't want that i don't want air to be leaking in to the system so i'm going to check my old one from the other engine if that's good uh, i'm going to try and replace this actually i'll do that right now okay so now i just popped the throttle body on so onto the rubbers um and it seemed really hard or impossible but I just heated it up a bit and it just took like 10 seconds and they, and they all popped on now uh, also another thing is notice that there's um, like uh, two holes here and uh, so that is like the direction of the screw so on this one the screw is pointing out that way and on these two middle ones it's out on an angle like this uh, this is the screw on the inside that I tie up to secure the throttle body and this one's facing the other way so make sure that the bracket it, um, the rubber is in the hole and to like look at the service manual uh, on how they should be oriented or else you you know it, it's done in a way so that you can actually there's room to to tighten it up if you put it in a way uh, other than what it's specified you probably won't have the room to actually get to the bolt so that's why it's done in that way uh and so other progress i've just put on this um i don't know what it is like cold air exhaust thing uh i think it this pumps cold air into the exhaust to burn up that's why you get popping because it burns unburned fuel uh it's like a emissions thing so that you don't get unburned fuel coming out the exhaust so uh, i put all that on i put all the wiring for the uh goes coils okay so so far I've put all the uh, intake you know throttle uh, I've routed all the cabling all the hoses I've just left with the uh, uh, the fuel pump stuff uh, so everything I put the radiator in um, I couldn't get the bracket on properly so uh, I'll leave that for later um, just want to get the bike running for now um, so also um, I was looking for the routing you know cable routing section in the manual I was actually searching for it before but I couldn't find it um, but as I was just browsing through just reading you know for something else I actually found where it was um, so it's in like the first chapter uh, so this was really helpful so that I know you know I ran the clutch cable uh i know how how the clutch cable runs and and the hoses uh so this was really really you know helpful uh to have this uh i don't think you can do this job without the service manual and i don't do any job without the service manual uh so yeah this is it was good that i actually found this and so now i'm gonna tighten up the main uh engine brackets or bolts and again you need the service manual for this so this is the adjusting bolt that i was talking about before and uh so there's like a particular order you need to do so you need to do the adjusting bolt at 10 newton meters uh and then you actually do the nut uh later on uh, actually sorry the adjusting bolt and then the uh the adjusting bolt uh lock nut and then the actual nut um, so you, it looks like you do the, the bottom nut first up uh, and then and then you do the top one uh, and then you do the front ones so uh, I'm gonna loosen everything up first and then it was the top adjusting bolt the top lock nut the bottom nut uh, and then the front bolts so I'll do that in order so this is very particular I think the way you have to do this on all bikes uh, you, you need to follow it carefully I bought my ZX6 before and uh, I realized that um, I don't know you can't see it here actually you can you can see all the spacing and stuff 
um, and my ZX6 wasn't um, bolted in essentially it was hanging just like how I've got it like this all loose um, the wheels were all loose now I've, I've I read it like a thousand kilometers I was riding it for a month I knew there was something not quite right with that bike uh, but then when I teared the whole bike down uh, fixed all those issues um, so yeah so let me just do let me just loosen the front ones first because it needs everything needs to be loose and then you follow the order first one see when I turn it like this it's actually adjusting it's actually adjusting this um, this thing. and then so like I said before so like I said before like this bike it says 10 newton meters so the, the pressure has to be 10 newton meters see other bike it just says zero clearance like have a clearance of zero mil so a lock nut is a special tool um i think most of them are like this uh, every well, the bikes that i've dealt with have the castle nut and have some tool so uh, all right, so engine is in uh, and I started up. I had a bit of trouble starting, actually, it wouldn't start the first time, uh, and I had to take a few things apart. And then it turned out uh, at the end, when I removed the power commander, it worked. And then I thought um, maybe I connected the power commander wrong, and I put the command power commander back on, and what it was was the ground wire um i put it on the wrong place it's actually supposed to be on the battery so i remembered afterwards to actually put that so i put the com power commander back so all up an extra six hours of work just messing around with the air box and unplugging and plugging stuff um it was just because i put the one at the back here in the wrong but i have started it up and i did have a noise so we'll see Now, there's that chatter noise, which I think, uh, that chatter noise is a bit of, it's a recall from Honda, so, um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that, whether I just drive it or, but the other thing is, The other thing is like I've got my car here because I drove it like about a mile and the brake the rear brake started to bind like it started to lock uh, this was really on really hard and then what I did is I brought I walked home like a mile I brought my car and uh, I relieved I relieved all the um, brake fluid so I might do a bit more, but uh, maybe not, it's quite low now. But I relieved all the brake fluid because like it just locked up like halfway, like a mile I was riding it and it just, the the, the car, the bike wouldn't push, wouldn't go. Uh, and then yeah, it pretty much was stuck. I couldn't even push it. The only way I could move it slightly is just from the engine power, just by pushing it. So I moved, it was on the driveway over there and I moved it a bit. Um, so I don't get it, like... These crappy, uh, you know, rear, rear sets with the brake, I don't know. It's, I think it's it because look, I think maybe it was trying to push up and this was stopping it. And maybe the adjustment thing was wrong. But I don't get, like I bought this bike and the engine was seized. So, like, how did they not, the previous owner, how did he not know this was a problem? Like, did he have a seized engine and then put this stuff on? Or did he crash it and then put everything on and then realise his engine was seized? Like, it's just, uh, it's a bizarre. I, I can't piece together the story of this bike. But, anyway, um, so, like, it rides alright. It rode alright. So, I rode it down... It was about a mile um, and then that's when the brake started to lock up and as you saw I went and got my car and uh, I just bled out this and then now this is uh, pretty much no brake uh, but at least it rolls 
and then I drove it back and it's okay there's not that there's not that many funny noises a little bit of funny noises um, but maybe that's because the engine has been sitting um, needs like a, what they call an Italian tune-up you know it needs to be just driven a bit uh, for that sort of stuff to clean clean up um, yeah so that's it put my new engine in it's a funny noise I might I'm talking with Honda maybe because there's a recall about it uh, and I'm going to talk to the guy I bought the engine off because I feel that I paid full price you know for something which is probably not worth the full price or I don't know maybe it's fine maybe you can just ride it and it's all good uh, so I want to get rid of these crappy fairings and uh, I want to put get rid of these crappy resets um, put everything back together and hopefully I'll have a good bike I, I like the feel of it uh, I, I like you know I think if I can have it nice cleaned up working good reliable I'll, I'll really enjoy this bike uh, and the front fingers are leaking so I don't know how badly it didn't feel that bad when I was riding there's nothing noticeable but you know who knows I wasn't riding that hard so yeah so we'll just end with a Bible verse, and that's from Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. And it says, The man shall not live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So uh, I think I really felt like I needed to share this verse uh, because of the worldliness that people live are uh, living in. Um, you cannot live just on the stuff on this world. You know, you need the word from God. You need to have a... A relationship a back and forward with God you need to be open to listen to God and uh, I think you know it's not saying that you shouldn't have bread it's not saying that you shouldn't have you know you can't you can you know be completely cut off from the world no you know you can have bread and you, you know you can have things like okay this is a bike it gets me from A to B or it has fun I made a video showing you how to install an engine you know you can do that but you can't live off that you need to live to live you need to have God's word in your life so I just encourage everyone to get to know God have God's work speak into their life not have a religious mindset as well because there was a time where I was living in a religious mindset but not really listening to God not having that give and take with God uh, so yeah that's all I've got that's how you install the engine I'll give a review next time. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, make a comment. Uh, if you like my content in general, please subscribe, take it easy, and ride safe.